All right, we're going to look at a standard MIDI file structure, just like um, if you watch that video on digital signals, um, that you got a good, uh, you got kind of a look at like RIFF files and the actual format files and what was going on in the hex editor. So it, they're similar to that, except for that they are SMF files and they're a big Indian. Um, if um, where RIFF RIF files are usually a little Indian. So and that is a very basic understanding. Um, the actual meta info um, at the front of it um, is normally under the header. Normally you're going to have a header that's going to tell you um, that it's an SMF file. And then you're going to have meta info that's going to be underneath that. Um, the meta info is probably, um, we'll get into the meta info, but it, it's probably fairly basic. Um, the other thing is, you know, it's set up in chunks and chunks. Um, if you don't know what a chunk is, you're just going to have to reference that. Um, but basically the chunks are um, different parts of the actual formatting, what's going on in there. So, you know, the first part, the chunk is going to have three components what I'm, from what I'm looking at. And this is, I've got about three or four of them that I was reading about. And it's got the track ID, um, which is going to be part of the header chunk. Um, you know, like the header chunk ID. So it's going to give an identification to the track. Um, the next four bytes will be unsigned value. It's going to specify the number of bytes in the data section of the track. And then you're going to have the data section of the chunk, which is going to give the actual data of that part. One thing to remember, if there's anything that you don't understand um, that we're talking about binary information, um, most of these um, most of these words that you run into, you can very easily Google to understand what they are. Um, but basically, as we're going through this, it's so that you can go back through and address issues you might have as far as your production, how you're editing, and how, when you're formatting, things that might be pertinent um, to that that you may run into. And it's always a good idea to have an understanding of your format anyway. So... Anyway, the header chunk, which we've talked about the components. So the header chunk, basically, first of all, that you've got a beginning of the header chunk that's going to say MTHD, which literally means um, the, that it's a MIDI file. Um, so that's the first part of it. The second part of it is going to be the length of the header chunk, and it's telling you how long it is. And then you're going to have some more information. The next piece of information is going to tell you whether it's a single track file format, multiple track file format, or multiple song file format. And so that will be the next piece of information. After that, number of tracks, track chunks that follow the header chunk. And then after that, it's going to give you a timing value. Um, it's an, a, a unit of delta timing um, that's going to be representative of, of beats per minute, um, it, it units per beat, I should say, because units per beat um, get that real clear that we talked about that it normally says 24, 24 pulses per quarter note, so that that is basically the sequencing time and how it sets it up in time so that there is a time reference to the file. So an example would be 90 plus 96 would be 96 ticks per beat. Does that make sense? And we talked about that just now, um, what it's what it's referencing to. So that would be the header file. Okay, the track chunk, the, the first part of the track chunk is, is indicating the size of the track and actual event data making up the track. So you have actually event data and the size of the chunk. Um, so basically that you're looking at the first piece of information is going to be that. Um, it's and then it's going to mark the beginning of the track um, the number of bytes in the track following this number and then a sequence track event so then we'd be coming to the track event itself um, the track event consists of a delta time since the, of the last event and one of three types of events so the three types of events um, let's take a little bit closer look at that Okay, so the first thing you're going to get in the track event is it's going to tell you the length of time that has elapsed from the previous information that you got uh, or from the previous event to this event. 
And then the next thing, if you remember the protocol, how it was set up and the binary information was set up between um, data or command and channel, how that was how that was set up in the protocol, then that gives you a direct relation to what's happening here in the actual event as you're looking at this information. If you're looking at the actual formatted file and a binary information or something like that, it's, you know, it's that the first the next part of it would be the MIDI channel message. And the MIDI channel message is basically that information that we talked about that's um, that's part of the command and the actual data. So that's going to be in there um, that's, you know, running between the MIDI devices and, and the information that's setting that we had talked about. And the next part of it is going to be an SMF meta event um, and descriptive of the actual event itself. And then after that, you're going to get SMF um, system exclusive events. So those are going to be exclusive commands and directions at the last part of it. And we talked about system exclusive things in the protocol so that you have an understanding of what that means. So basically, you're looking at um, this part down here is going to basically be the biggest part of what's going on. Um, it's going to be giving... Um, channel messages and all the all the information and the instructions that we talked about in the protocol being transferred on that channel uh, for that track. So that track and channel information is going to be going on there and giving you all the information of all those commands and data. And then it's going to give you some meta event information. And then next, the system exclusive, which may or may not be even included. Um, I, I'm as far as I know that that um, with the different formats that, and different protocols that there are um, as we go through this thing and looking at it that that may or may not pertain a lot of times what you're using and sometimes it might pertain to it a lot um, depending um, on what type of um, the manufacturer of the equipment that you're using um, what type of format and what type of protocol that they're using that's going to denote a certain type of format that has to work with that protocol. So let's take a little bit closer look at the meta. Okay, so the actual meta event is it's fairly complex and um, basically what you're getting there is a lot of meta info just like meta info on an RIFF file, um, you know, WAV file. So basically you're looking at these type of things, a sequence number, text event, copyright notice, um, sequence or track name, um, instrument name, um, cue points, MIDI channel prefix assignment, um, so the channel, um, end of track, tempo settings, um, time signature, um, key signature, all that kind of stuff that's basically meta, meta information about the actual impulses that you're being, that are being sent to you that, that's the information that's going along with it. So that if that makes sense to where if you've got, you're looking at your piano roll editor and you've got these notes all the way across here, that the stuff that's going with those, those it's not just, you know, notes, you know, impulses or, you know, what we've talked about, you watch that video on um, data signals that you understand that those are pulses, you know, of set duration and things like that. The basics of it, and this would be the actual meta information that would go along with that that would be pertaining to other aspects of, you know, the actual information other than just those pulses. And so that ba that's the basics of what it's covering. So we go back to the actual, the, 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 the meta information, or I should say that the actual information in that format that, you know, there's a lot of information, but the, inv the information set up fairly basically. It's not very, it's not really complex. Um, some of the complex things that are in it um, are, are, can be a little bit complex, but um, I think it should have been fairly easy to understand what was in there and where you can find it and, you know, what information that it's sending, what information it contains in case you ever need to go find it. And, you, and if it's going to really super, if it's going to be very pertinent for you to understand that and what's happening. But anyway, um, we talked about the channel messages, and this is some information that's just talking about things we had talked about, node off, node on, 
um, all the different things that we had commands and data that can be sent through there. Um, and we basically covered most of that stuff. Um, some of the things that are a little bit different is that um, there are, you know, table of MIDI controller messages for different things, breath control, foot control, or portamento. And, you know, these are going to be on and off signals um, for the most part. And there's a list of them here that you, they should be very much, um, you should have them in whatever, I know I do. So, I mean, I, you know, you should have them in whatever equipment that you're working with to actually under, you know, pull them out and see exactly how yours are laid out, which should be pretty generalized to this. So there, we're not really getting anything anywhere. We're not getting a lot of whole, a lot of other information out of this that you're not going to understand from just basically understanding the MIDI instrument that you're working with um, as far as what it can do and how it's set up. Um, these protocols and this file format is basically addressing those in a very generalized way. Um, the thing about like the instrument patch map, um, we had talked about that a little bit about that the actual patch map is is you know generalized for the MIDI protocols and the MIDI formats so that it you know can directly address those in both the ways that we had looked at in the protocol and in the format and there's 128 of those that are set up you know the, you know in a generalized way that are for all of them to communicate and so there's nothing new there to look at um, Basically, I think that's going to about cover it. There's some other information in here that could be very specific to what you're doing. But myself, I'm not seeing anything that I think that when you get into when we get along a little farther and we start looking at um, some of the other things that are going on with the MIDI as far as from in the software, or in the DAW or in the hardware um, that we're going to address those things a little bit more. But that was basically the format we were looking at and what it's addressing. And, you know, when we go and look at that, that, you know, we have already discussed all those things. And about the only thing that you might get into a little bit and have some issues is the meta info. Um, sequence number, um, text event, copyright notice. Most of these are pretty self-explanatory. So, I mean, I don't know that any of those really need to be addressed too directly that I think just the basic understanding of the MIDI info that we're going to get into that at least we know where it's at in the format now. So as we look at those things, as we progress and we look at different aspects of MIDI um, as we, you know, kind of peruse through it that now at least we know where they're at. You know, we look and we know where they are in the protocol and what the protocol is or basic outline of it. And now we understand how the format's set up so that if we're ever having to look at the format or take the format into consideration for whatever we're doing, that we've got a pretty good understanding of how its basic structure is formed. So I hope you enjoyed this video and on to the next part.